and stochastic optimal transport. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank organizers for giving me the opportunity to give a talk in this meeting. I'd like to... Uh, just Come on. Ah, okay. You you hear me, right? Okay, let me start. So okay, the plan of my talk is this. Where I first briefly introduce uh, uh Schrodinger's program and then Nelson's program and then discuss optimal transport. Maybe uh okay, since I I'm talking in my house, so maybe I should stop uh, video because of uh, internet program and uh well, last program is uh, maybe I, I, my, I cannot talk about last program because i have i prepared 63 pages but anyway let me start uh wait a minute Strange. Oh. Okay. Okay, maybe uh, this is boring for all of you, but uh, let me start from Schrodinger's original program, I mean, which I found in the literature. And suppose that we have uh, two set A and B where particle you find particle in each point and the number of total particle is uh, capital N, okay? And the, each particle moves independently to, to this set B and transition density from AI to B, BJ is given here. It's, it's a random, right? Oh, excuse me, oh, I can't see. Okay, and the uh, constraint is this, number of particle in each point are fixed. And uh, he would write, he wanted to maxima, find the maximum probability of such events. Since each, each particle are independent, probability uh, is described in this manner, okay? Where CIJ is a number of particles that move from point AI to BJ. And constraint is here is this. Each point, I mean, particle move from set A to B, but each point in BJ, the number of particle is fixed. So you can write in this manner. This Ki is a number of particle in, in, in Ai, therefore this equal to Holt. And then, yeah, this equal to Holt. And uh, we suppose that a uh, number of particle which move from AI to BJ is sufficiently large. Then using a starting formula, a program and taking logarithm of the probability, the program becomes a maximization of this, of this guy under this constraint. By setting, uh, by, uh, setting P0, P1 by this equation, and then QIJ denote uh, CIJ over N, then this maximization program because a minimization, this minimization program. Here, H is a relative entropy of QIJ with respect to mu I P I J, right? And taking, making this problem more general, I, in my talk, I call setting a program by this definition. First of all, I'd like to define the relative entropy of Q with respect to P. Yeah, Q, P are, oh, sorry. This is RD times RD. Q and P are the probability measure on RD times RD. If Q is absolute, yeah, continuous with, with respect to P, then this is, well, probably you know the definition of relative entropy anyway. Okay, let's con, uh, defines a set of admissible probability measures on RT times RD, which have the first margin is P0 and the second is P1, right? Then Schrodinger's program can be written this way. 
minimum of, uh, of this yield entropy under this constraint. Here, px dy is a probability measure for each x. And uh, yeah, uh, right. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, as a general program, this is a minimization program of relative entropy or probability measure, which satisfies this constraint. So, in, in his paper, he didn't solve this uh, program, but he gave a, a equation for a, he, he gave an Euler's equation for this program. Well, I, when, when I was a graduate student, I learned the name of this equation, the Schrodinger's function equation. Right, so in Japan, this name is popular, but I don't, I don't think maybe Schrodinger system is much, much more popular in, in Europe. So anyway, <laughs> it's not me who used this name. I mean, I was just taught. Uh, it's okay. Anyway, let me explain this. Euler's equation, okay, taking first variation of, of this uh, Schrodinger's program, you get this equation. And, uh, oh, yeah, in my talk, I, I, assume, I always assume this P, P1 has density, okay? And let's take a probability. Uh, when P0, P1, and PXY, DY, which is a probability measure on RD, find the product measure nu zero times nu one, non-negative sigma finite product measure, which satisfies this. And the minimizer of uh, Schrodinger's program is actually nu zero dx pxy nu one dy. Okay. If we have solution to this equation, then you find the minimizer of this. Oh, by the way, uh, this set a p zero p one is a compact set. Uh, compact set, yeah. So. This has a, and real time entropy is, is row semi continuous in Q. Therefore, minimizer always exists, right? If this this is bounded, I don't know, finite. If this guy is finite, okay. So, but this this in this equation, you you have to find measure product measure. So, let me introduce uh, another description of uh, Schrodinger's function equation. Let's take, let's set, oh, sorry. Oh. Let's define U0 and V1 by this equation, by this equality. Here, if P, PXY is, for example, the Gaussian kernel, U0 is a semi-convex function, so is V1. But anyway, if we set, if we define U0 V1 by this equation, equality, then, Solution to Schrodinger's program can be written in this manner. Okay. And the and the Schrodinger's function equation is equivalent to this system of uh, equation for uh, function, right? If this is a solution and if PXY has a, is a nice function, then user is also nice. I mean, if for example, if P is a Gaussian kernel, then use a semi-convex, right? So, and the nice point of, nice viewpoint of this description is that instead of finding a sum finite measure, you find a nice function u0 plus u0 plus v1, right? Singularity of p0 or p1 disappears here, this is a function. But it doesn't mean that uh, you, you find a nice idea to solve the Schrodinger's function equation. I also introduce another uh, description of Schrodinger's function equation. Actually, Schrodinger's function equation is also equivalent to this equation. This is one, it's not system, just one equation. What's V, V star? V star is a convex conjugate of uh, Schrodinger's program. Okay, I, I, I just recall the Schrodinger program here. And if we find, if you have, uh, if you solve this equation, then set new, new zero dx by this equality, then you solve chasing a function equation. Uh, later I explain uh, 
I refer to references. Now I don't do that. Okay. And uh, next, I, I explain Schrodinger's problem from viewpoint of SDE, stochastic differential equation. For the sake of simplicity, I only consider that uh, PXY is, uh, is written by this uh, Gaussian kernel. And let's set H by this e equality. So H is a backward harmonic function of T and X, okay? And uh, here, here's Jameson's result. If P1, P1 has a density, then this function H is, uh, has some this, have, have this regularity, and this stochastic differential equation has a weak solution, unique weak solution. Here, WT denotes a winner process starting from zero. And the reason he, why, uh, the reason Jameson considered this SDE is the following. Joint distribution of x0 and x1 is exactly the solution of uh, uh, Schrodinger's program, which can also be written by this man. Oops. In particular, Schrodinger's program is equal to this, but uh, by, this, uh, by this description, it's also equal to relative entropy of px with, with respect to px0 plus w on the path space. And this is equal to, by uh, this formula, this is equal to this one, right? So in the starting point, Schrodinger's problem was a problem on the measure, uh, this variation problem of the measure on Rd times Rd, but uh, it can be written by the relative entropy of uh, measures on the path space. Indeed, the distribution of X can be written this way. So it's absolutely continuous with, with respect to variable motion times plus uh, X zero, initial, initial random variable. So, and uh, the following was very actually interested to me when I was a graduate student, that Professor Zambrini's paper result. Well, XT, I mean, which, which was given, uh, which was called uh, H plus process con and constructed by uh, Jameson is a unique minimizer of this problem. Here, point is this. This is entropy, relative entropy. So if you only look at the relative ent entropy, story end here. But if you, instead of considering this, uh, instead of but this distribution, uh, description, if you look at this, equality, then right hand side is a, if you put this guy in here, then program becomes a kind of scarce control program with fixed end time uh, to end point distribution. So this, this idea understanding makes us, made me, uh, you know, to generalize this program as a program of scarce control with a more general cost function. Okay. So, <laughs> right, okay, anyway. And uh, as a remark, Schrodinger's program can be written in this way. This is nothing but just that. I substitute uh, equality. And B is finite. B is finite if P0, P1 has a second moment and differential entropy is finite Be because Schrodinger's program is uh, infimum, uh, minimum of uh, real -time, this kind of real -time entropy where the measure in here have a first and second moment P0 and P1. So if this is, so this is sufficient condition for the finiteness of B, B uh, Schrodinger's program. And uh, well, this, this is equality. So if it B is finite, then log H1 minus log H0 is a integral function, right? With respect to this measure, joint, joint distribution, right? But uh, how about each H1 and H0? Is it integrable for in uh, P1, P0? It's not always true. If B is finite and if uh, P0, P1 has second moments, 
then each function is integrable in PT. HT is integrable in PT, which can be which, uh, shown by the result in, in this paper, or you can prove it directly. But anyway, so one, uh, I also want to know, maybe it's known, but I, I don't know. Uh, suf suf uh, suf sufficient necessary condition so that uh, this is true. So if somebody knows, anybody knows the condition, let me know. Anyway, okay. So next I, oh, sorry. Next I uh, discuss uh, zero noise limit of Schrodinger's program, right? And first I briefly introduce Munch counterbits program with a quadratic cost. It can be written in this manner. Well, it's a infimum of uh, x0 minus x1 square, mean value of x, x0 minus x1 square, where p uh, distribution of xt is equal to pt for t1, 0 and 1. But uh, by Jensen's inequality, actually this infimum can be written in this way. xt is absolutely continuous stochastic process. Oh, I'm spending much time. <laughs> and uh, this in here may equal this guy. So it looks like, uh, you know, this, this description implies that, uh, well, this is a stochastic control problem with, with no brown emotion part. So we, it, it is true since, uh, you know, uh, when we consider H plus process, terminal distribution should be, should have a, uh, density, but I don't want to assume that condition. So we regularize terminal distribution by this, okay? And instead of Brownian winner process, we consider square root W winner process and put every put epsilon in every notation, like uh, X can be written X epsilon, B can be written X, B epsilon. Then in this case, uh, the risk vector is uh, DX log H epsilon times epsilon. Oh, I'm I'm here. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, then the following is no. If if P T has a second moment for T is zero and one, and if P zero has density, then uh, P epsilon converges to uh, Schrodinger's program. In the zero noise limit, it converges to the Monte Carlo program. Besides, the drift vector of the H plus process satisfies this condition where phi is, a, phi is a convex function, okay? And uh, well, x, x, zero, x epsilon zero is equal to x zero, right? Anyway, and this function actually so such is uh, by this function, this measure is a min unique minimizer of Monte Carlo's program. So this gives a, uh, probabilistic proof, I mean, SD proof to the Monge's program with causal cost. So since I proved this, I, I, I found some, I, I mean, I felt kind of some possibility to generalize uh, optimal transportation theory in the framework of uh, SDE. So I tried, uh, ah, yeah, and also now the, uh, here in the diffusion matrix is a constant. In that case, P epsilon is actually Martingale. Therefore, this equality implies that uh, this equality. Here, they take a supremum of all, of all R, R, of T between zero and R. This can be proved easily by the you know, tubes inequality. So, but when uh, diffusion matrix is not uh, ident uh, the constant matrix, P epsilon is not necessarily uh, Martingale. Okay, maybe I should skip. Sorry. Okay, the first first part of my talk is from section seven of this paper, and on Schrodinger's program, the, the, I, uh, this 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 is. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's, I refer to this guy's paper, 
and Professor Zambrini's result. And uh, also, I also refer to these guys. I'm sorry, skip. And this paper gave a counterexample that you know HTX is not does not belong to L1PT, and this is a zero noise limit. Also, on uh, on the Schrodinger program, I refer to some uh, nice survey of Professor Leonard and uh, well, my I I only say it's a nice, <laughs> but anyway. Okay, uh, next, uh, Schrodinger's functional equations. Okay, in Bernstein's, he didn't give a proof, but uh, he said uh, he he pointed out Schrodinger's functional equation has a solution if uh, p x y kernel function is uh, positive and continuous. But I don't know, sorry. And this paper, now probably it's famous in uh, data science. Uh, he, this person is Okay, so to see functional equation by the successive uh, approximation, I, I, I would say, <laughs> in one dimensional case. And it's generalized by Boring, the compact household met, uh, when the state space is compact and the household topological space. And in this paper, state space is a sigma, sigma compact space. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So it also gives a, a, a considered case. It includes a case of a Euclidean space. And in this result, uh, important assumption is a kernel function PXY is positive and continuous. And SD, uh, in this paper, they he considered the SDE for H plus process. And this also gives a different uh, approach, but as <laughs> proof is very difficult for me. So I didn't even need, I mean, I just took a look and found it difficult. And in this paper, as I consider the uh, continuity of uh, solution to Schrodinger's equation, uh, Schrodinger's program, continuity in the terminal distribution P0, P1, and kernel function Q. And in this paper, topology was strong topology, and this paper, topology was weak topology. Yeah. Oops, sorry. And the uh, application of Schrodinger's program is probably this algorithm, uh, synchron algorithm. But I don't know anything about this. I just found the uh, references and uh, just showed. Right. This is probably. Uh, survey of, uh, I mean, relation between uh, for, for, for that result and et cetera. I, I don't know. Uh, and recent results, there are some, so many, but I, I'm not a player of Schrodinger's program. I'm just, uh, I mean, audience. Uh, so I, I'm just watching what's, what's proved <laughs> so often. Okay, let's go to the Nelson's program. I first, uh, Introduce Schrodinger's equation simple. It's a uh, if I understand correctly, uh, I, I don't understand quantum mechanics, but if I understand correctly, Schrodinger's uh, quantum mechanics is a quantum mechanics for one particle. Maybe someone, uh, something else, but I don't know. <laughs> this denotes by V potential energy and the H per constant and, and M is a mass of particle. Schrodinger's equation is, is simple. Schrodinger equation is this: in the nonlinear case, b might be might depend on the absolute value of uh, psi. Okay, and if initial, uh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it's true. You you know well. I guess is uh, if initial initial function is uh, absolute value of the initial function is. Uh, probability density, then so is uh, for any t. And the uh, bond interpretation is that uh, the meaning of this guy is a probability density of a position of particle. Okay. Then Nelson problem is this. Okay, find the focal Planck equation for this uh, probability density. Well, if you we, if we put B is by this, then this density satisfies this for Planck equation. 
And even if uh, Schrodinger equation is nonlinear, this is true. Okay. So Nelson problem is this. What's the equation of motion for quantum dynamics? By SDE, if you have a, since we have a focal point equation, you have this program. Okay. And if uh, this SD has a solution, then solution is called the Nelson process. Okay. Here I emphasize that uh, P is a gradient of scalar function. Okay, I, I, I pointed out later about this. And uh, well, I learned, I learned when I was young, I learned the Nelson program by this book. And uh, this is a uh, development of the, uh, by another people. Here's a reference. First, they consider the, under this condition, I, I, which I call finite energy condition, uh, they solve the existence of Nelson's program. First result was given by Karen in this paper. The approach was uh, functional. I mean, he constructed semigroup and then shows up the existence of Nelson's program. Okay, this is by approach. This is by approach of uh, stochastic analysis and another, another approach. And uh, in this paper, actually, by by this time, th by the recent time knowledge, I can say that we consider the uh, much marginal Schrodinger's program and took continuum limit. Then we, we found, uh, we showed the, the existence of Nelson program. And indeed we consider, we didn't write down explicitly, but we, we consider the di different kind of, vari uh, of uh, variation program, which can be con considered a uh, uh, continuum limit of Schrodinger's program. And I will discuss later. And the solution, and we we okay, we found some kind of in Nelson's program, left with the B does not have to be a gradient of a scalar function, but the, in this in this construction, our drift vector V is always a gradient of H1 function. But uh, Drift vector of gradient field is unique in uh, for the Fokker Planck equation. Therefore, uh, the process constructed in this paper is the same as Nelson's original problem. I mean, Nelson's process in his uh, original paper. And here's a generalization of this is also <laughs> very difficult for me. I didn't understand by this. So, and uh, well, in this paper, the uh, oh, maybe I should, yeah. The difference of this guy in this paper is that in this paper, if I understand correctly, they also chose a uh, optimal B. In this paper, for any drift, drift vector B, they constructed as Nelson's program. And uh, here's in this paper, they constructed the uh, Nelson program for jump type process. So I think this is the first result on Nelson's program for jump type process. Okay, maybe see when I talk about uh, somebody else's result, I might say something wrong. So please uh, excuse me in, in advance. And next, I consider the generalized finite energy condition. In finite energy condition, R is equal to two. We generalized it uh, to more, less in, in to the case with less integrability. Here, this function can be replaced by a superlinear function in my, without, without any change of proof, which was pointed out by Professor Jim Fan, Kansas. I proved the existence of, under this condition, existence of Nelson process by the continuum limit of stochastic optimal transport. When I wrote, in this, wrote this paper, I knew some duality theorem for stochastic optimal transport, therefore I could do that. And in this paper, we directly consider the continuum limit of stochastic optimal transport. And so proof is that we gave a direct proof for 
for this uh, for Nelson's problem. Also consider the well, uh, no, not now. Okay. And uh, how about when? Yeah. So far, diffusion matrix is uh, non-degenerate, uniformly non-degenerate. When it's degenerate, this paper will consider the, the zero matrix case by the zero noise limit, zero noise limit of uh, Nelson process. And uh, I, I didn't read the proof of this paper. This paper ex extremely de uh, generalized uh, this. This is kind of, I think, probably remark, but this is a very nice result. But only, uh, but only the case when division matrix is equal to zero. In this paper, they consider the degenerate division matrix, but bounded, if I remember correctly. And this paper is very nice. Uh, he considered the uh, uh, degenerate of case, uh, the case of degenerate ma division matrix, but L1 integral only inte under uh, only integral case, and and this result by this result we we extended our previous result this recently, but I, I I'm not sure if I can I have enough time. And this is a generalization of uh, Trevisan's result. And this is, in this paper, they consider the Nelson problem for jump type process. So, okay. Ah, I'm sure I don't have time. Okay. Okay, let's, let's write down Nelson's program as a program of stochastic process, okay? okay we suppose that A, a is a symmetric non-negative def definite matrix, and B is a vector valid function and the measurable, of course, and PT is a family of uh, probability measures on RD. We write AB belongs to this set if this focal park equation fold. I, here I point out, emphasize that even if for each A, B is not unique in much of the major case. Okay, so, and A and B belongs to L1 function, L1. And if A and B belongs to A1 local, then we write, we use this notation. Maybe I should write here local, but anyway. So Nelson problem can be written in this way. Uh, when it PT, family of PT, such that this is not empty, and when AB construct a semi-tingle, such that this is a semi-tingle with quadratic variation process, this one, this one. And marginal distribution of xt is equal to pt. And this, and if this, this has a solution, they also say that the superposition, ah, superposition principle holds, sorry. Superposition principle, principle is missing here. Okay. And uh, D. Tripson's result, uh, if, if, if a, a B belongs to this set, then Nelson problem has a solution. And uh, it's a generalization, it, it's this. Instead of integrability of A and B, suppose this is true, then Nelson problem has a solution. And uh, this result has a, Nice application to uh, stochastic optimal transport with non convex cost function in one dimensional case. But I'm sure I, I don't have time to talk about it. Yeah, finally, I, yeah. So, okay, let's talk about stochastic optimal transport. Well, it's complicated, but anyway, we consider the Martingale actually. And uh, and the uh, quadratic variation, variation process of uh, Martingale part is fixed, but we uh, bounded variation part is not fixed. Okay. And we, we consider the case when L is, is, L is a cost function, but convex in, in the last term component. And stochastic open transportation program. We, we consider this. We first, oh sorry, we first fix initial and terminal distribution, and take uh, infimum of this, this guy. Yeah, beta is a 
derivative of abundant variation part of xt. Next, we can, we fix marginal distribution for all t and in, take infimum of this guy. If this infimum is empty, we set uh, for we set the infimum for infinity. Okay, this is Castle optimal transportation program. And, and I, I introduced two more programs. One is this. We consider the same problem for over the solution of uh, Fokker Planck equation, okay, which satisfies th these constraints. In this case, since marginal is fixed here, this PT is fixed, but B is not fixed. Here, B is not fixed, and this this measure is not or not fixed, but satisfy this uh, constraint. Okay. Another problem is uh, the next stage. First, I, I introduce notation for the for the measure mu on this product space mu one by mu one we know the first marginal mu two the second marginal. Okay. And we consider measure mu dt dx du. That's, that's, that it's a distribution of and uh, probability. And first, first, is, first marginal is a uniform distribution on the one. And uh, this is integration, this integration, and this new t. The first marginal of this new t is a uh, has a weakly continuous version, and this is true. This kind of approach to, co to consider Hamilton Jacob equation is not my original idea. It's, uh, I, I learned this idea from Professor Diego Gomez lecture in Tokyo, also Professor H. Evans lecture. But anyway, idea is that instead of distribution of xt, we consider distribution of xt and beta t, the drift vector. So this idea and originally comes it originally come from uh, mother theory, which is a variation problem of uh, invariant measure of dynamical systems. But anyway, and then we consider the same problem. He has pointed this. In here, this integration is uh, linear in new, right? So we linearize the problem in each case. And uh, if P belongs to this set, then as new, we consider this. For say Martingale, new, this measure corresponds to new. And uh, the set about which we take infimum is bigger and bigger as the number becomes bigger. So this inequality always hold. But the superposition principle implies that this is this becomes equality and makes program much easier, right? And this, here's another point. See, this is in the second program in each, in each, in each of three variation problems, second problem is always, uh, this is a family of probability measure, but uh, we identify this family of probability measure with this measure. It's a, it's a very nice point to consider second programs. Okay. And uh, yeah, if cost function is convex in U, then equality holds. Okay. Uh, no, no way. Yes. Court horse. And L is uh, super linear in U, uniformly in T and X, then minimize, we have minimizer is, is of this, uh, can be written in this map. But well, this is not that much important, so we, I skip. Okay, next, okay. Ah. I explained the 
I describe the, the theorem. Oh, oh. oh, maybe I should, yeah. Here, important assumption is this superlinearity of L, function L and the convexity of this. Some other regularity is out. Okay, this is regularity is out. Assumption. Let's take a, by, by this, by this, we define the present of transformer L, L with respect to U. Then under these assumptions, first program has this, this theorem, this reality then we have phi, you know, the minimal bounded continuous viscosity solution to this HJB equation. Actually, this, this can be written as an infimum of uh, some mean value, I mean, stochastic control representation. And for and we assume the regularity of uh, AIJ and the L, then we have, oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, this, then this minimum bounded continuous viscosity solution becomes a classical solution. Okay. Yeah, right, I skip. And and then uh, solution of classical solution we have this this equation is in particular uh, optimal drift vector b beta is a function of t and x t and for the second program we also have the duality theorem since we identify family of p t with uh, d t p t right here but the uh, aj equation is different from uh, Last one, it's, it's here. Oh, sorry. So basically, yeah. And right. And this is a, oops, sorry. That doesn't, that doesn't, this phi denotes a minimum bounded continuous viscous solution. Yeah. And the, it, if uh, HJB equation has a classical solution, optimal drift can be written in this. It's a function of t and xt. So yeah, in Schrodinger's program, I, I gave sufficient condition for the finite, fin, fin, finiteness of Schrodinger's program. In this general setting, uh, we have this. For, for example, uh, if uh, each and terminal distribution has a density and satisfies this integrability condition, then there exists BTX such that this has a weak solution. Oh, sorry. Okay, this SD has a weak solution. If, th since this has a weak solution, you can consider a variation problem when L is uh, of order U, U to the R, right? At least there exists one XT such that this is last, last line is true, okay? So this is a this gives a sufficient condition for the finiteness of B. Yeah, here's a reference. Um, well, okay, maybe I, I cannot complete. And the first result was Professor with uh, was with Professor Mr. Chur in uh, Paris, and when when uh, she kindly uh, gave me the opportunity to visit Paris for a month. In that case, in this paper, we only consider the a is a division matrix is identity. And we gave a duality theorem B by classical solution. And uh, we use a lower sum of continuity, uh, convexity of, P, of B in, in P1 by Cameron Martin, Martin, and Gilles Formula, and lower sum of continuity by the Titans of C. Martingale. And this paper, we, we consider zero is the limit of duality theorem. And then, yeah. In, only in this case. And in this paper, we generalized it uh, to the case when A is uniformly non-generate, but we consider duality theorem for each, for each variational program, right, Def separately. And but, by the, but the hamilton jacob equation was uh, considered in the viscous solution and the classical solution. But the idea was basically the same. We formulate the program by viscosity solution because it's a international conference for, for viscosity solution. Okay. In this paper, 
they consider the same problem but slightly different setting. Here, A can be degenerate, but in their setting, this set is closed convex. So it's not always true. So if A is identity, that's fine. This is true. So the uh, setting is different. But the uh, thing is, point is this. They, they didn't consider the distribution of Px, but also Px and, and uh, bounded variation part of X. But the tightness for semantic, idea to use tightness for semantic area is the same. And in this paper, thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, superposition principle, oh, I should stop now. A can be degenerate, and this is true. And the approach is so different. I mean, superposition principle plays a crucial role to prove that uh, convexity and lower semi-continuity of this guy in P1. This is a new approach, but the difficult part is from somebody and from, from Tripsan's paper, <laughs> not me. And good point, good thing is since we consider we linearize program by by the last last guy, we don't we could uh, we don't have to use this kind of this assumption. This assumption was also supposed in uh turn to these papers because they consider tightness of semantical. This, uh, this assumption is often used for, to prove the lower semi-continuity of actual integral. So, and this is, this is a paper to, to, uh, that gives a sufficient condition for this. And the idea of the proof is this. Let's set this for, for any P. Okay, this, this is end probability measure P, I set a sub-level set of this integral. Then under assumption, for any compact set K, this set is compact in this set. Then you can prove that, uh, I mean, uh, lower semi-continuity of this, this guy and this guy. Convexity is much more, much simpler. Okay, ah, here's a uh, application of uh, another result, but I, I think I should stop here. Thank you for your attention. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I couldn't speak everything. Okay, that's it, thank you. So uh, if anyone has questions online, please just, I mean, you can just unmute yourself and ask your question. And if someone in Lisbon has a question, I can pass on the microphone. That's the easiest way to, to do that. So maybe Jean-Claude, I will give you the microphone if, um, if you want to pass it to someone else, just check online. Um, I have a very naive and a non-technical question. Is it audible, what I'm saying? I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should be here by yeah, So if we start from the classical Schrodinger problem, I am wondering what I can tell my analysis colleagues who are very familiar with the concept of entropy and so forth. And I wonder what I can tell if I introduce the Schrodinger problem to my analysis colleagues, uh, what I can tell them in order to impress them that stochastics is actually needed to solve the problem. Uh, what would be your answer to, to, to that, given all your expertise and all these versions and methods to say that uh, you have solutions for the stochastic part of the variational problems? How much can you use this to impress the colleagues from the analysis uh, laboratory? Uh, uh... <laughs> Okay. Uh, Does stochasticity help to understand if you are just an analyst? Just an analyst. Yeah. Let's consider uh, Nelson's problem case. Okay. It's a continuum limit of Schrodinger's problem. Um, if uh, Schrodinger's equation is nonlinear, for example, when when you consider the laser beam, then it uh, it's a nonlinear Schrodinger equation and explode within finite time. To study the 
asymptotic ring, at, for example, for some time t, string solution of uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation explode. But uh, absolute, I mean density, I mean square of uh, absolute value of Schrodinger's of the solution to Schrodinger equation is a probability density. Probability density might converge to some uh, irregular uh, sing singular probability measures. And uh, actually, I was asked by a PD guy how, if uh, I, I can uh, do some contribution. And the uh, Nelson process has some contribution to this uh, asymptotics of this uh, you know, density of density when the so solution to the equation explodes. But the difficulty is this, and uh, you if you if you have some s, uh, if you, if you sub estimate of uh, L1, L1 norm of B, or maybe I should, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, let me ask. Uh, Me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this this is probability density, right? And even if uh, even in the case of nonlinear Schrodinger equation, that is uh, this V depends on psi, we have this same program and the L1 norm of, of B plays a very crucial role in the, in the case of nonlinear theoretic equation for which the uh, solution explodes with a finite time. See, um, interest is uh, asymptotics of this density. Now, I mean, this density times dx distribution of, uh, of a particle. Even if solution explode, distribution might, type, uh, might converge to some singular measure. It's known. And to consider this, this kind of program, L1, five, uh, the boundedness of L1, measure, L1 norm of this drift vector is very important. Then the, and PD guy asked me if I can prove it. I get, I, I saw, I proved something, but it was not enough. So I think it might be a good application to consider this kind of nonlinear Schrodinger equation. I mean, distribution of the of this of a laser beam program by this uh, Nelson's program. Also, by approximation, maybe much marginal Schrodinger program might be useful near the explosion time. I don't know. I hope I explain something. <laughs> okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, so, uh, is your uh, theory of uh, uh, stochastic uh, optimal control uh, poses some, uh, I mean, some relations with uh, Fleming's uh, theory of control, the Mark Markovian process? Mm -hmm. uh, I was a student of his. Yes, so I, I, I mean, uh, do you have some relations, uh, your, your theory of uh, stochastic optimal control and uh, Fleming's controlled Markovian process? Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I can- Are they the same it. or? Uh, wait a minute. Ah. So, Okay, for, for example, uh, finite time horizon control program can be written by this uh, stochastic optimal transportation program. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to explain, but uh, I don't know. So stochastic optimal transport is kind of a fundamental solution for 
for uh, finite time horizon stochastic, con stochastic control program. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah. So if, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I don't have a explanation. So for example, if a terminal function is, a, ah, no way. Now, what I can say is, is that, oh, maybe I should write, write. So thank you, Professor Mikami, and uh, just for everyone. So we in Lisbon are lucky enough to have a coffee break, and uh, we will reconvene in about uh, so twenty minutes time. So that would be uh, well eleven fifty uh, European time. And for the rest of you, well, uh, I'll leave you the computation. So thank you all, and uh, see you very soon. Yeah.